Hello, and welcome to my channel. I don't own any of the Heikaiyu characters or music or anything other than the plot. This doesn't in any way describe how the Heikaiyu characters act. It is just for fun, so don't take any of this seriously. All of this is happening IRL unless said otherwise. Enjoy. June 12, 2022. Damn it. Calm down. I heard the first doorbell. Who the hell is it at 3 a.m.? Kagiyama stomps to the entrance door and snaps it open. Do you know what time? Kagiyama starts screaming before he freezes. Oikawa? I am sorry for waking you up. I think I lost my keys. T that's all right. Just enter quickly. Why are you soaked? Am I? Oikawa says in a low voice as he looks at his clothes. Yes. Oh, yes, I am. Just take a quick shower before you catch a cold. Why are you still standing there? Oikawa? Kagiyama says in a soft voice, before taking Oikawa's hand and walking him into the bathroom. Oikawa follows without saying anything. Kagiyama sighs as he stares at Oikawa. He presses his lips together before taking Oikawa's shirt off. Oikawa didn't move, he just stood there motionless. He allowed Kagiyama to strip him before guiding him to the bathtub already filled with warm water. Come on, get in. Oikawa sits in the tub and hugs his knees to his chest, making Kagiyama's heart ache. Kagiyama? Yes? Do you really believe that it's not my fault? I already told you yesterday. It isn't your fault. Then why did everyone today blame me for it? I was treated like nausea. As if I shouldn't be there. Kagiyama places Oikawa's head on his chest and cradles him. It's not your fault, Oikawa. It really is not. Just if I didn't tell him. You can't blame yourself because of this. You told him because you trusted him. You wanted to open up to him. You wanted him to know that part about you. His reaction and anger are not on you. And, of course, the crash was not your fault. But... Kagiyama sighs before he grabs the loofah and pours some soap. Let's finish washing up before the water gets cold. Kagiyama says before letting go of Oikawa and beginning to scrub Oikawa's back gently. I can do it. Um, but let me. Kagiyama says as he takes Oikawa's arm and rubs the loofah gently against his arm before moving to the next one. This is embarrassing. After Kagiyama finishes washing Oikawa's hair and body, he helps Oikawa wear the robe before placing a towel on his hair. He takes Oikawa's hands and intertwines their fingers before walking into his bedroom. I can get dressed alone. But. And no, that will be too much. Oikawa says after Kagiyama gives him the cloth. All right. I will make some soup to warm you up. Oikawa nods before Kagiyama leaves the room. What the fuck happened at the funeral today? Is there a legal way for me to hunt his family down? Kagiyama cuffs as he takes the knife and tightens his grip around the handle. What did they tell him? Kagiyama screams internally as he chops the vegetables aggressively, emptying all his anger on them. And how long has he been wandering under the rain? Kagiyama sighs before adding the vegetables to the pot, then water, chicken broth, and seasoning. He walks back into the room to find Oikawa crying again. Kagiyama approaches him slowly before kneeling in front of him. He takes Oikawa's hand, making Oikawa look at him before quickly wiping his tears with the back of his hand. I am sorry. Don't apologize for crying. It's better to let it all out than bottle it up. I just can't take it anymore. Oikawa says before dropping to his knees near Kagiyama and hugging him. Kagiyama caresses his back softly as Oikawa continues to cry. They stay in that position for few minutes before Kagiyama speaks. Oikawa? Yeah, sorry. Oikawa breaks the hug before sitting back on the bed. I will be back in a second. Oikawa nods before Kagiyama rushes out of the room to finish the soup. He pours some into a bowl before walking back to his room and placing it on the counter near his bed. Eat while it's still warm. Oikawa takes the tray and starts eating as Kagiyama climbs on the bed behind him to dry his hair. Oikawa doesn't object as he continues eating in silence. Thank you for the food. No problem, go wash up and get to bed. It's already so late. 
Oika nods as Kagiyama takes the plate from Oika's hand and heads to the kitchen. He cleans the mess he made but frowns when he turns around. What are you doing? S sleeping? Oika. I am not sleeping on the bed. Listen. I don't want to cause you any more inconvenience. I will even move out in a few days. Oika. Kagiyama says in a soft voice, but Oika doesn't stop his rambling. I will arrange everything with my manager. I have stayed here for so long. Oika. Why yes, sorry. You aren't going anywhere. But, you are not causing me any inconvenience. If you were, I would tell you. And lastly, sleep in my bed. No, it's already five. I'm going for a run. You have been walking for God knows how many hours. Rest properly. I, are you going or should I carry you there? I, I'll go. Good. Oika stands up and heads toward the bedroom as Kagiyama trails behind him. Oika climbs onto the bed as Kagiyama closes the blind forbidding the sunrise light to enter the room. Call me if you need anything. Thank you. Around 1 p.m., after practice, I am leaving now. And I don't think I will make it to the evening practice. You must be kidding me, Kagiyama. We have a practice game soon. You can't keep ditching practice. This is the first evening practice I won't attend. But how many morning practices have you missed? Kagiyama, if this continues, you might get replaced as the main setter. Give me a month. What? Just one month, and I will go back to my usual self. And why can't you go back now? Because someone is my priority. Who? I will tell you later. So please, Iwezumi, cover up for me for a month. Iwezumi lets out a loud sigh before nodding. Just one month, but under one condition. Kagiyama frowns as he tightens his fist. What? During this month you have to attend at least one practice and also never miss any practice game. Understood? Kagiyama, if you can't do at least that, then forget it. Okay, fine. All right. Kagiyama leaves the building and hurries back to his apartment. Is Oika still asleep? Kagiyama opens his bedroom door slowly before smiling. Oika was lying on his side, hugging the comforter, with his entire back not covered. Kagiyama chuckles to himself before approaching the bed. He frowns once he looks at Oika's expression. Oika? Kagiyama says softly as he removes some hair from his face. Shit. Kagiyama curses under his breath as he places his palm on Oika's forehead. He is boiling. Damn it. I should have stayed with him. Damn it, Iwezumi. I should have ignored your call, and come back immediately as I planned. Kagiyama clenches his fist as he enters the bathroom, gets a towel, and rinses it with cold water. He places it on Oika's forehead before he fixes Oika's shirt and covers him. Kagiyama starts warming up the soup he prepared earlier before preparing miso soup and rice. The doorbell interrupts him, making him cuss under his breath as he walks towards the door with heavy steps. He swings the door open with a deep frown. Is Oika here? Kagiyama sighs before walking away from the door allowing Kuro in before he nods. This little, huh? Where is he? The bedroom. Kagiyama grabs Kuro's arm before he starts heading there. What are you doing? Leave him. Why would I? Do you know the amount of trouble this kid caused me? He is running a fever. If his temperature doesn't go down soon, I will probably take him to the hospital. Kuro rubs the bridge of his nose as he sighs. How did he cause trouble, though? Some fans saw him wandering the streets looking completely out of it in the middle of the night. His videos are all over the internet. People are confused and need a statement. Did they know that his father passed? No. Kagiyama presses his lips together as Kuro sighs before sitting on the couch. He didn't want to tell anyone. He was afraid someone might find the location and people would bombard his family. Kagiyama nods as he hands Kuro a can of iced coffee before walking back to the kitchen to finish prepping food for Oikawa. The management wants a statement from him and a public apology. He shouldn't know about any of this in this state. 
Kuro sighs again before nodding. I will figure out a way to cover up or postpone this mess until Oikawa is better. Also, keep me updated on his health. Don't admit him to a hospital alone. Call me before that. Stuff is way out of hand at the moment. His name can't tolerate another scandal. Kagiyama nods as Kuro takes another sip from the can. I will be leaving now, call me if you need anything, man. Kagiyama nods as Kuro leaves the apartment. Kagiyama carries the tray of food to the bedroom before placing it on the counter. He raises the blinds allowing light to enter the room, before sitting on the bed near Oikawa. He frowns watching Oikawa's pained expression before he starts shaking him gently. Oikawa. Kagiyama whispers as he shakes Oikawa's shoulder. Hey, Oikawa, wake up. Um. Oikawa hums painfully while still asleep. Kagiyama takes the wet towel and places it on Oikawa's throat. Oikawa, you have to wake up to take some medicine. Come on, Oikawa. Oikawa slowly opens his eyes. Everything hurts. Try to sit up to eat something. I don't wanna. Have no appetite. I know, but you have to eat to take the meds to get better. Oikawa whispers before taking the towel from around his neck. He tries to sit but immediately places a hand on his head. Dizzy. It's all right. Tolerate this for few more minutes. Oikawa hums as he sits properly, placing his head on the side of the bed border. Did Kuro come here? Forget work for now. I have a meeting today before we start shooting next week. Don't be bothered by it. Can you please call him and tell him I can't make it? Kagiyama sighs before speaking again. He was here a few hours ago. He knows that you are sick. He will figure stuff out. Now stop worrying about work and open your mouth. Oikawa does as he is told as Kagiyama feeds him. I can eat by myself, though. Oikawa says with a small smile before eating another spoonful. I am aware. Then let me eat alone. I am not allowing you. You can barely move your head without feeling dizzy. But... Just eat up and allow me to spoil you. Oikawa's face heats before taking another bite. Is your temperature getting higher? Why is your face so red? I I guess. All right, let's finish eating quickly, so you can rest. I am sorry. Dude, stop apologizing. Sorry. Oikawa? All right, all right, I'm sorry. Okay, fine, I am done. Oikawa chuckles, making a small smile appear on Kagiyama's face. You're so pretty when you smile. Hey. T that was the fever speaking. Ah, uh, huh, convince yourself with that. I am not forgetting it. I take it back. You are mean for bullying a patient. Kagiyama shoves the spoon into Oikawa's mouth, interrupting Oikawa, and making him pout as he chews. Meanie. Oikawa says while still smiling. I can't eat anymore. Just finish the miso soup. I really can't eat anymore. Okay, just one more bite for me. Kagiyama feeds Oikawa one more spoonful before popping the medicine into Oikawa's palm. Oikawa takes the medicine with warm water before sliding under the covers again. Kagiyama wipes Oikawa's mouth with a soupy towel before cooling off the towel again and placing it on Oikawa's forehead. Try to sleep a bit. Thank you. Do you want me to close the binders? No, it's fine. Call me if you need anything. Kagiyama says as he covers Oikawa, he walks toward the door to leave the room, but Oikawa calls him. Yeah? Seekun, you, stay with me? Kagiyama nods before climbing onto the bed near Oikawa. I shouldn't have asked this. You'll catch my cold. I won't. How do you know? I haven't gotten sick in ages. I am immune. Kagiyama? Yeah. Can I sleep on your chest? Sure. Oikawa moves slowly before placing his head on Kagiyama's chest. He closes his eyes as Kagiyama begins to stroke his hair slowly. I can hear your heartbeat. Oikawa says as he drifts to sleep. Kagiyama kisses the top of his head before whispering. I love you. Huh, Kagiyama-san? What is he doing here? I saw Oikawa-san come here last night. I thought this was his new apartment. Oh, Kuro-san is here too. Huh? I am sure this is Oikawa's new apartment.
Oh, oh, don't tell me. Oika and Kagiyama are really dating, after all. Nah, that can't be true. Oika is straight. Moreover, Oika said they are not. And I believe him. Then, why is he here? Is he being forced? Or blackmailed? That makes sense. No wonder he was looking so bad when I saw him at night yesterday. Probably Kagiyama is threatening him. How dare he mess with Oikawa? He probably is jealous of him. That's it. Oikawa will never lie to his fans. Kagiyama, we will ruin you. I have to tell other people. Stalker picks up the phone and starts tweeting, We need to help Oikawa. He is getting blackmailed. That's why he looked so lost last night. Let's all gather in front of the agency for answers. Stalker starts texting in Oikawa's number one fandom. I will find out about Oikawa's location again. We need to help him. He is in danger. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed it. Later guys.